Good morning, good morning. Hey everybody, it's your old pal Dave J and I'm on my uh, trek to work. And uh, I'm very excited, even though I'm exhausted. I, uh, I've been up till two in the morning the last several nights uh, putting together a video that I just posted for my weekly video blog. You should know about my vlog. Say that 10 times fast. Anyway, I, uh, I did it. It's called Dave J Tuesday. That's what my video blog is called, but it's uh, introducing today my new song, Time Machines. And what I'm endeavoring to do, it's something I learned from social media guru and all around nice guy, Damien Keys, who uh, I'm learning a ton of great stuff from and I'm very inspired by. He did a, a video saying, uh, essentially, you know, the old model that like Metallica used in the 1982 to 1990 region of time uh, doesn't really play anymore. You don't build a fan base that way because the world is different, the social media stuff is different, and so you've got to play by new rules. Or you, according to him, you've got to break the new rules. <laughs> I love that. But that's a whole other story. But in this case, he says, uh, what you need to do instead of making people wait for your new single. Introduce them to it in its nascent stage. Let them in on the journey, bring people on a journey. So that's what I'm doing with you right now. I'm bringing you on a journey to my gig while I blather and digress on many a topic. Although I'm very excited to talk about a particular topic today and uh, it touches on what I've already mentioned, which is songwriting, one of my greatest of many passions but it's certainly been a lifelong passion. Uh, something just flew into my eye. <laughs> I have a passion for getting that out too. Let me see if I can. My mom always said go like this towards the center of the eye. Of course, using a filthy glove, probably not some cheap. For those people who speak, you speak, I speak fluent. Anyway, uh, for those of you who, what? Uh, huh? I don't know. Let's continue on about the more important passion of songwriting. So this is what I've done, and I've already started recording my song, Time Machines, that I've been working on for months, and I, I completed earlier this month, started recording with my friend Danny, uh, and uh, I will share along this journey excerpts uh, of the production that we're working on and other things. So I think there's a way <laughs> I can provide the link in this video. I'll say, oh, click right here, yeah, click here. I don't know where it is, but if anything else, if nothing else, I should say, in the comment section below or in the, the detail section, I don't know what it's called. I, I'm really tired. I've been up till two every morning and I've been teaching myself Final Cut Pro in order to make this new video. And it's been a great experience. You can see, I can see my eyes are all like red, like I'm wearing that, uh, you know, what I don't know what kind of makeup it's called, eye makeup, that's what it's called. Um, but I'm not. It's just natural from exhaustion. Uh, but it's worth it because I'm enjoying this entire thing. And I, this, is, this is what I want to do. Create content, share it, and hope that you share it. Feel free to share it. Please let others know. And if you dig it, smush like and, uh, and connect and share and send me a message. Let me know what you'd like me to blather and digress about. But I'm not done blathering and digressing about songwriting. Let's get back to that. See, I'd mentioned in a previous video that uh, I discovered the Monkees TV show when I was about seven years old. And I was so enamored with their humor and the girls chasing them everywhere, but especially the catchy pop rock songs that I was, and those shirts can't forget those shirts. I always wanted one, still don't have one. Gotta get one. Good gift idea. Okay, that by the time I was nine years old, I'm like, I gotta write a song. Uh, I think it came about not from me saying that to myself that way, but I had my first crush. That's what it was about. Her name was Jennifer. I don't think it'll embarrass her to let you know. Jennifer Koretnik, and uh, we're still pals to this day. And uh, we, we kind of laugh about it now. But I had a long-standing crush. It was like from third grade to eighth grade with a few breaks 
in there for a few other girls. <laughs> Sorry, Jen. Uh, but anyway, run. So um, I wrote this song at the time called Cause Girl, I Love You. Back about eight years ago, I, I actually uh, recorded uh, a very simple solo acoustic version of it. And uh, I will share that link below as well, or somewhere where you can see it. So check, check below. It's always below, right? Um, <laughs> down there. You know. Anyway, um, the song was very monkeys influenced. And then I had been going to sleepaway camp for the past few summers at that point. And when I went that summer, I brought my song with me. I had typed it up on a typewriter. My, uh, my aunt and uncle, who were in printing, knew I loved paper. Whenever they'd come over, they'd give me paper, and I'd draw, and I'd write. I'd be constantly writing stuff on all this paper. There's always paper everywhere. My parents made a big deal. Always paper. No wonder I love The Office, you know? Thunder Mifflin. Big fan. Okay. Um, so, so I brought that typewritten sheet of paper, which I still have to this day, by the way. The original typewritten song for Cuz Girl, I Love You. And I was very fortunate that in his first summer at that camp, sleepaway camp called Camp Taconic in the Berkshires of Massachusetts, Hinsdale, Massachusetts. It was a great, great place for me. I still have some great friendships from there. And, uh, and a lasting legacy of experience that have helped shape me, certainly creatively and socially in other ways. But um, so fortunately, in his first summer was my now pal, then pal, Marshall Zucker, my counselor, who, uh, who could play, he played the vibraphones, which is, main, is his main instrument. Excuse me a second, look away, I've got to wipe my schnoz. What were you doing over there? I was talking to you. No, okay. Um, so Marshall sat down at the piano with me, and I said, well, let me step back. I said, Marshall, listen, uh, I, uh, I wrote a song and I brought it with me, but I don't know what the chords are, and you play instruments, could you, could you help me figure out if I sing it to you, what the chords are? So we, we sat down at this piano in this, um, I don't remember what that bunk was called, it was across from the playhouse, and it was this little bunk that they would do, there were a couple bunks there, it was near the girls' line, and they had a piano in it, and we sat there for a while, and I sang it to him. What would you do if I took your heart? What if I said that you tear me apart? Do you think I lie? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Please don't pass me by, cause girl, I love you. And then, by then I think I'd also been turned on to the Beatles. And then my bridge, Marshall pointed out, very Beatles. Yeah, it was a, uh, yes, I love you more than anyone I've ever loved. I was nine years old, anyone I've ever loved, right? <laughs> Funny in retrospect. And in my heart, I feel things that I've never felt before. It is just great to have that feeling. You are everything to me. Cause girl, I love you, love you, love you. Cause girl, I love you. Ooh. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I put the ooh in as a nine-year-old. Beatles, definitely. Anyway, um, no, I don't need a lift. Thanks for honking. Yes, they, you know, the bus drivers, they see me walking down the street doing my videos. They want to show support, so they offer to pick me up. I say no. I'd rather walk through the park and make my video. Don't push at me. I'm talking to the people. See, the buses, they get a little resentful when I talk about the other bus. That's why. Okay, songwriting, 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 songwriting. Real estate, real estate, real estate. Okay. Uh, God, I love writing songs. And I've just continued on. Um, some of the other early songs I wrote that are of note in my memory. I wrote one in eighth grade called Moving On. And actually, oh my God, I don't know if this was about my longstanding crush on Jennifer. It might have been, because I said it was through about eighth grade. And um, I wrote a song called Moving On, and I performed it in the talent show in uh, ninth grade. Me and my acoustic guitar, I'd been taking about a year of lessons, 
and I learned how to play it. And I made, oh, that's when I wrote it, because I le got, learned how to play guitar from Andy Flavel, recently retired, but guitar teacher extraordinaire. Still in touch with him. Great, great stories there. Um, maybe for another video. And uh, I wrote this song, performed it, and I was so nervous in that talent show. That was the talent show that Rob Fusari uh, performed a piano duet with an underclassman, and they did the Eddie Rabbit Crystal Gale song. Just you and I, just you and I. It was good, I remember it. Um, and uh, Rob Fusari gone on to work with the, the Gagas and the Destiny's Childs and, the, and all them. Whitney Houston, I believe. Interesting fella. I've seen him a couple times. Any road. Um, songwriting, songwriting, songwriting. I remember my, my pal Gina Mutone sitting in the middle of the auditorium out there while I was nervously playing this song. And she's like, smile, smile. And it, it helped. It really helped. It made me kind of like, oh yeah, I can relax a little bit. <laughs> and she seems to be having, giving me some reason to smile telling me to do so. That was the reason, I suppose. Anyway, Gina was also, this, maybe this is better for another story also, because blathering and digressing is what I do, but I'd rather stick with songwriting right now. I'm on a roll. <laughs> and, uh, but remind me to tell you the one about Gina Mutone in sixth grade and when I'm 64 for Grandparents' Day. It's a very special memory as well. Uh, I, I feel very fortunate to have a lot of special memories. I remember a lot of stuff from my childhood. It was very, made a strong impression on my, on my life. And I, I, there are certain things I blocked out for a long time, some tragic things that did happen, but uh, I've dealt with, and that's for a more dark video. Anyway, um, I'm all right now. I mean, you know. Well, moving on. Songwriting, songwriting, songwriting. Ooh, I almost uh, got into a little uh, black hole moment there. Black hole moment brought to you by Milky Way Candy Bar. No, I don't know why I said that. Oh, Milky Way black hole. Now I get it. See, my mind freeze, free associates. My mind freeze associates. My mind free associates. I don't even know what's a, what's a coming out of my out of my out of my lips. Okay. Oh, I'm so tired. Another four hours sleep. Not good. No. My wife is on me about that. She's right. You got to take care of your health first. And uh, I got I to gotta get in a better habit. And I've, I've let it go with the sleep. Okay. So um, what other songs did I write early on? Well, what happened when I got to high school was I continued guitar lessons for a little while until I got into the high school plays, you see. And then I got on the morning announcements. And by then I was doing impressions on the morning announcements and comedy. I started being known, I memorized every Steve Martin stand-up comedy record and was doing it everywhere I could. Did it in the talent show and, and a bunch of stuff. Anyway, uh, so it became comedy, comedy, comedy. And then when I got to college, it was comedy, comedy, comedy. And then sophomore year of college, I was neighbors with a guy who, his name is Chris Masters, had a band called Edge Park. And uh, his lead guitar player, Phil, nicknamed Five, Five Rainville, uh, became a, we became tight friends, and he's a great guitar player, and uh, we love the same bands, Squeeze, XTC, Elvis Costello and the Attractions, The Jam, uh, Adrian Ballou, all that great, clever, lyric-driven pop rock. Uh, so we became fast friends, and then uh, because of really of Chris Masters first though, because he was serious about songwriting and we were two of the only seven script writing majors at Ithaca College at that point in history. And so we were, you know, in some classes together and we were neighbors and I, and he, he thought I was a goof, which I was comedically, maybe otherwise, I don't know. You'll have to ask someone like Chris Masters. I'm sure he'll tell you, trust me. I remember how that guy operated. Very sure of himself, to his credit, I suppose. I was never. But anyway, uh, it's part of my appeal. Um, so, so basically, uh, Chris got me wanting to write songs again. I'd go to his gigs, I'd hear his new songs, I'd be like, ooh, that's really good. He was really into Echo and the Bunnymen. That was his big thing. Uh, Ian, and then, so anyway, um, 
great stuff too. Um, and I started listening to more of that stuff and uh, getting into those bands I had mentioned that Phil and I were into and started writing songs again. I'm like, oh my God, once you listen to XTC and you hear that songwriting, oh my God, it kicked my brain out of my head. I said, hey, come back, I need you in there so I could write songs with you. And it eventually came back after a short hiatus. Um, so, one other memory I had about, it just occurred to me, speaking of the brain out of my head analogy. Um, I wrote a song when I was about 12 called Drug Flood about how bad drugs were and things. It was just a lyric. I never really wrote the music. I knew, I, I wrote the, the melody. I never, I don't know if I ever, I probably did find chords to it because I was learning guitar right after that, so I probably did. But my grandma, Evelyn, was so proud of me <laughs> for writing that song. Uh, and I entered it into a lyric con competition and I won an honorable mention for Drug Flood. Yeah, I have that certificate somewhere. And, um, it was like a nationwide lyric competition in here in America. And uh, anyway, so uh, little did she know that I would fall prey only a decade later. But you know what? I uh, no longer. I'm good. I'm never better. I've been through it. Remember what John Lennon said? Hey, we've all been through the drug thing, man. You know, and it's not good. But uh, like a lot of things in life, you make mistakes and you move on, you learn from them. I will say that that was a, an extremely productive creative period for me, that huge chunk of years in my adult life. Uh, whew, really, really not responsible for the creative output, but certainly inspiration flowed during those years, probably for more than that reason. I'm sure it had as much to do with my passion for it and energy for it and putting time into it and just my love of it, but Anyway, um, it is the truth, and uh, I will tell you more about it another time, I suppose, and I feel more comfortable opening up about it. Um, it's been uh, many, many years in the, year, in the rear view mirror. Um, so I continue to write songs, and I will say that uh, it's been about six years since I've been involved with that stuff and the variety of stuffs. But uh, I uh, had to relearn my writing process because it was so ingrained, everything I did was so ingrained with using that stuff that uh, my process is now, I noticed recently, very different. When I was using, I would just, stuff would pour out of me like tons quick, like waterfalls, like a faucet that was on full and fast and ideas would, and I couldn't write them down fast enough and come up with them, I was constantly. Now I'm still always coming up with ideas, but I'm much more deliberate now, take my time, and it, I've noticed that now it'll take me, at least in the recent batch of songs I've written, to be really satisfied with it. Um, you know, months of pages and pages and scraps and taking it with me every day and like when I'm on the subway, just taking a fresh look at it again and, uh, trying, and sometimes you'll write something, you'll love it, and then you'll take it back to your guitar and be like, ah, this doesn't fit the way I thought it would. And then you, you edit, and a lot of it is economy of words, I find, that's very important in my process now, whereas before it was the opposite. I was sort of fancying myself inspired by Elvis Costello and even Andy Partridge of XTC. They'd, they'd cram a lot of words in, you know, and I always loved that because I'm a very verbose fella, as you may have noted these videos have also been called verbosity viscosity but I I think I'm going to opt to make the thing this this thing called uh, blather and digress my friend Tom Fadoruso that's you Tom I know you're listening that's you take a bow take a bow for the people they keep, they, they, oh they found me I don't know how but they found me I didn't steal that song oh it's an ambulance Okay, um, no, but, uh, yeah, Tom, uh, Tom had, had mentioned, after my first video, I mentioned the blather and digress, and Tom made a comment in my YouTube channel saying, uh, I think he said something like he was going to make t-shirts out of the blather and digress. I, I didn't realize when I said it that it was, it is kind of a catchy little uh, thing there. It's better than verbosity, viscosity, which probably, 
you know, that probably neatly breaks down like who I was <laughs> back then when I used to write. I used to write verbosity, viscosity, you know? And now I try to be a little more refined, blather, and digress. Mm. Yes, so I think I like blather and digress better. Thank you, Tom. And, uh, well, so I, um, last thing I guess I'll talk about before I, uh, abscond with this video. That's not the word. Sometimes I use words and I don't think about what they mean, but I don't care because I think abscond is a great word. That means to, to leave with it and to steal it. But, um, but I like it. It's a word of the day. Abscond. <laughs> I, I just want to write a song about it now. I just love it. I want to use it and everything. Okay. Um, so, new songs I'm working on. I was uh, recording, as I mentioned, with my friend Danny Weinkoff yesterday at his Red Pants Studios, and we're, we're, we're working on Time Machines, which we're making a lot of progress on, and we finished up a song that I had done with him in December for this coming Christmas 2020 called Santa Forever. It's actually a prolonged story. Uh, I'd written it in 2009 for a company called Joma Music that had a... Uh, a good dear friend of mine, Rhea, who sang it. It was supposed to sound like the Amy Winehouse-esque girl groups of the early 60s. And, uh, and it's been playing for the last, I don't know, upwards of 10 years all over the country, all over England in stores like Marshalls and Pennies. I don't know if there is a store named Pennies. It just sounded like there would be one, like in England. Everybody knows Pennies in England. That's where I go for... No, wait, Penny is an American thing. Pences. Okay, I don't know, is pence, isn't that the uh, British term for penny? Does anybody speak British out there? You there, do you speak British? Then put it in the comments, what, what do you say? What the name of the store that would be for, it doesn't matter, put whatever you want. Do I get, put, put the, your favorite uh, pant size in the comment. You know what, <laughs> I don't, you know, I'll, I'll be open to any kind of conversation about anything. I blather and digress. So the songs now that uh, I brought into Danny yesterday, I said that these are the ones I'm working on for after Time Machines. One is called Birth of a Modern Vaudevillian. And uh, I really like it. Birth of a modern vaudevillian. I've got a million of them. So I'll be doing a video on that soon. And, uh, and finishing it, of course. I have to finish the lyrics. The music I've got all now. It's all together. Cool little bridge. Um, oh, middle eight. That's what you call it, middle eight. <laughs> Beatles used to use that term, middle eight, for like a bridge. And it refers to eight bars that are a, a departure from the verse and chorus. But what they started to do was call it a middle eight, and it was more than eight bars or less than eight bars or whatever it was. But it meant departure. But I, uh, I'm all about departing. Uh, blather and digress. Uh, it's all about the departure. Should that be the, the slow, the tag phrase with it? No, that doesn't, that's dumb. Wait, Tom, you tell me, what do you think? Anybody, pant size in the comments, I don't care. Okay. Um, the other song I've been working on for a long time, actually started it 20 years ago, and I really liked it, and I never finished it, really, is called Keep It Moving. And uh, I picked it up periodically. You'll have, as a songwriter, you'll have certain songs that just hang around and you just don't finish for whatever reason. Or you don't record or you don't get to it or, but you always come back to it, oh yeah, yeah, that, I love this one, you know? So Keep It Moving was one that occurred to me when I was studying the Damien Keys videos and he was talking, I, I don't remember which video, uh, but about writing songs specifically for your show. He had mentioned that and I was like, oh my God, that jibes with what I, had, I was just studying at that time. It was in December, actually, this past December 2019, about Tom Jackson. Tom Jackson is this guy who, from Georgia, and I don't know if that's the right accent, but who cares? Georgians do, but uh, you know. Let me know about it in the comments. Georgians, tell me about your pant size. Uh, anyway, that, that's getting old fast. Um, I'll have to make up a, another ridiculousness to put in there, to, for you to put in the comments. Anyway, um, Tom Jackson's all about creating moments for your audience on stage, in your stage show, that people come to your show 
to experience moments and have emotional connections. And it's great because Damien Keyes talks all about people wanting on your social media to experience moments and emotional connection. And the whole thing jives. And I've been dying to have, find out from Damien Keyes if he knows of Tom Jackson's work or what he would think. Um, who knows? Maybe they're arch enemies. <laughs> Damien's like, no, emotional connection is for social media. And Tom Jackson's like, no, man. I don't know if these are George Jackson or not, but dang it. I say that the emotional connection is for your stage. That's where it belongs. You understand? Come back now, you hear? Cook, cook. Roscoe, Pico, train. <laughs> anyway, do we have any Boss Hog fans out there? Yeah, Boss Hog. All right. So, Boss Hog for president. Okay, I don't know. Anyway, I don't get political, but that, that I have to mention. All right, I'm going to run. I don't want to get hit. Okay. Okay, well, Keep It Moving is also on the docket, and I, I now have, it's funny because I found a demo from 10 years ago where I'd written a couple verses, so I actually have, I have a couple parts, and maybe like a, it's a little bit of a throwaway middle eight, but I have to work on it now that I introduced it to Danny, and Danny liked both Birth of a Modern Vaudevillian and Keep It Moving, what I had so far, so now I'm inspired. I even brought it with me in my guitar bag back there. This is a zippered compartment that I keep my papers and, uh, so I'll, and my pens. And I'll be doing, uh, during my lunch break, I always take something with me, like Damien Keyes' book, or listen to one of these videos, or do some writing. And I'm also working on uh, a short film that I've written some songs for as well. And it's called, the film is called Too Much Bupkis. I'm sure I'll be telling you more about that in the coming months because I think we're gonna shoot it this spring, 2020. And I'm gonna play the lead role of Bupkis. I co-wrote it and my buddy Tom Brown, I know a lot of Toms. Uh, Tom Schiller's another Tom I love. And uh, a lot of good Toms out there. Uh, anyway, uh, so Tom Brown and I, Tom's gonna direct the film. And I've written some songs for, for the project. I've written, jeez, God, we've been working on it six years, this project. I think I've written about seven songs over the time, hoping we could use one of them or two of them or as many. And, uh, and so Birth of a Modern Vaudevillian is in contention. I don't know yet if we're, uh, how and if we're gonna use it, or if we're gonna use it just for promotion or for the credits, or maybe we'll have Bupka sing it, or maybe something. We're gonna find out together. And, um, so that's about it. I am on my way to uh, my assisted living facility gig. Please, as I said, uh, feel free to leave a comment below, share, smush like, smush, and uh, connect any way you can. Thanks very much, and uh, take good care. God bless, feel good, and, uh, and I'll talk to you, or at you, it seems, again soon. Thank you.